two and a half years and 25 pounds later, I am finally finished with the dungeon. What you are seeing on the screen right now is the journey. 32 videos, three live streams, many Instagram posts, and even some shorts. Did I learn something? Yes, I learned so much. Did I have fun doing it? Despite some frustration, yes, I definitely had fun. Way back when I started this channel, I intended it to solely be to showcase my terrain building process for people who wanted a behind the scene glimpse at my terrain business. Honestly, a lot of my intention was to bring views to my eBay store and my Etsy shop. My goal back then was to someday quit my day job and become a full-time terrain maker, which in the end I did reach my goal, though I doubt my small YouTube channel contributed much success to that. That said, after posting a few videos, I started getting into things a little bit more. I started wanting more than just a stale channel that funneled traffic to my shop. I really wanted to create something more than just modular terrain I sell in my shop. I thought about it some more and said to myself, maybe I should build a dungeon on camera. I figured I would enjoy seeing that, so I was sure a handful of other people would as well. And that's how this thing all started. Not knowing much about filming and keeping people's attention, I designed the dungeon on camera. Many people don't know this, but it was 100% randomly generated using the 5th edition Dungeon Master's Guide. That video is long and boring, but hey, I was still learning. And I am still learning. Though I do think I've gotten a little bit better at this videography thing. I experimented with many techniques and materials while building my dungeon. My first successful resin pour was on camera in one of the earlier videos. I'm still very happy with the way those cave pools turned out. I'm especially proud of those little fish I painted into the water. And now, I do successful resin pours weekly. If it wasn't for experimenting with resin in the dungeon, I would still be doing gloss coats over paint to resemble liquid. Which is not a bad method if you're crafting on the cheap. Also while building the dungeon, I learned that hot glue is an amazing crafting material, which has not always been my opinion. Not only is it great for sticking foam together, but it's amazing to sculpt things out of. I mean, all these things were made out of hot glue. I also enjoyed working with the not so great Crayola clay, Super Sculpey, Green Stuff, and Milliput. All four are viable sculpting mediums for us crafters. I think I would prefer to stay away from the air dry clay though. It's just too much of a hassle and takes forever to dry. I have a strong preference for Milliput at this time. It sculpts a lot like clay, but dries rock hard. Also a first time thing while making the dungeon was painting 3D printed miniatures. That was an experience that took getting used to. I ordered some minis on eBay and was unpleasantly surprised to see the repeated striations on every single miniature that I ordered. I did not realize I was ordering 3D printed minis. Regardless, I decided to make it work. And made it work I did. Painting them partially inspired me to get a 3D printer as well. Because in the end, 3D printed minis are at least well worth it for anyone wanting to flesh out a dungeon. One of my favorite parts of the dungeon was using random adornments and pieces of trash in my build. Like discarded insides of pens, beads, toothpicks, glitter, and so many more different things that I can't think of off the top of my head. That's always been a fun part of terrain building for me, and I really don't get to do that nearly enough with the modular terrain that I sell online. Another favorite part of my dungeon were the miniature fantasy portraits that I did. As some of you may know, I have roots in the fine arts, and I tend to get to the point that I crave doing a painting. And these little portraits really helped satiate that craving. The first D&D prop I ever made was in the dungeon build, that mysterious egg. It's a fantasy classic and those styrofoam eggs at the craft store have been calling my name for years. So it was finally time to make a Dungeons and Dragons prop. And now I'm going to give you a break from my voice for a few seconds while we just enjoy some music with some crafting.
And of course, there have been struggles with the dungeon. That main struggle being getting videos out regularly, which I didn't do, but at least I followed through and finished all the videos for the dungeon. Anyone who's been following me knows that there were a few times I struggled to get videos out. Let's just say that YouTube does not work the way I had thought before I created my channel. Back then, I pretty much thought that all content was evergreen and would get pushed out to people just whenever. I really thought that most people found videos to watch through YouTube search and not through YouTube feeding them suggestions. Well, I learned otherwise. Whenever I took a break from posting my videos, despite still being around, I found that quite a few people acted like I was gone. So that was a really strange learning experience for me. One that I still sort of struggle with. For me, I could watch a terrain building video from eight years ago and be happy watching it. And it doesn't have to be fresh and new. I can still learn something from it. The videos don't even have to be that entertaining for me. They don't need a bunch of noisy music or they don't have to be full of energy. I'm not really there to get attached to the person building it. And so for me, the learning experience is the big thing. If they show me something that I haven't done before and I want to try, that's always exciting. But like I said, that's just for me. And I understand YouTube has become an entertainment platform a lot more than it is an educational platform. That said, there are still a a lot of educational videos out there. They just take a little bit longer to find. Anyway, I do remember three significant breaks I had to take. The first was more about not understanding how YouTube works, as I just stated. Also, I was working full time, my business was picking up, and then I was also trying to learn how to produce better videos. I'm really not sure when I slept back then. Maybe I just needed less sleep because I was excited about doing all this. The second big break was because I was getting overwhelmed. My business really picked up, which is great, and I had to focus on that. After quitting my day job, I was able to focus on YouTube again and that went well for a while. And then this last break, the longest of all, unfortunately. Despite that, it still doesn't seem to have been that long. I even stopped posting on Instagram for a while after posting daily. It's super cliche on YouTube to say it, but I had a bit of a mental health crisis. It was less to do with posting on YouTube and making content and all that. I was just internalizing all the negative things that were happening in my life. I was letting too many problems inside and taking them to heart. It was almost forgetting getting what I do have. Those things to be thankful for. It took a lot, but I finally came around. It's awesome to be able to do my hobby for a job. It truly is a dream come true, and I'm so thankful to everyone who helped make it happen. Anyway, the dungeon. That's why it took so long to finish. Then compiling all the footage, figuring out what to say, was really feeling a lot of pressure to make a grand finale of a video. I've really put this last video off and maybe there's also a part of me that is sad to see the dungeon series end. Regardless, let's get on with what we've all been waiting too long for, seeing the completed dungeon on the table.
thanks so much to everybody who joined me on this dungeon building adventure. Without your help and motivation, I may have never completed the dungeon. So I'm very thankful to have everybody who stuck around and watched the whole dungeon building series. This may be the end of this dungeon building series, but it is not the end of dungeon building. Stay in touch to see more modular dungeon stuff to come.